Hey everybody, so today I want to talk about the keyframe stretcher node with Infusion. But before we get into that, I have a couple little demos that I've set up. They're going to help explain the keyframe stretcher, so let's just very quickly go through those. So first I've started with a fresh Fusion composition. This is 24 frames per second and it's a 5 second clip, so that's where we have the 120 frames. Now over on this left viewer, I've created just a very simple title sequence. And the important point to note is this title sequence can be broken down into three main steps. There's this first step where it slides in from the left second where it sits in the middle, and third when it wipes off to the right. So the way this particular animation is set up is the first second of this five second clip, it's, it's coming into the middle, it sits here for three seconds, and then the final second, it wipes off to the right. And the reason I want to show this example is because those three stages are very much in line with how the keyframe stretcher works. So I just wanted to point that out, that we're going to be coming back to those three simple stages in just a few minutes. Over here on the right viewer, I've set up a very simple animation where I have uh, this red and green ball sort of going through three sort of similar stages. The first stage, they kind of come up here. Second stage, they take the three seconds to run across the screen. And the final stage is that one second drop. And I've also set up this timer right here. And to set up a timer like this, it's simply just a text plus. You add a text plus node, you come over to style text, you right click, and you would go select time code. So it's very easy to set up. But what it does is this section here counts the seconds. This here counts the frames, so we're at 24 frames per second. So I'm just going to stop this animation for, for a moment. And we'll go up to 3 seconds and 23 frames. 24 frames is really numbered 0 through 23 as opposed to 1 through 24. So 23 is our last frame. So then I click over this next frame and we tick up to 4 seconds and the 0th frame. And just to confirm, we go back to the 0th frame. I'm going to scrub up to frame number 23. So right around fr frame number 23, it stops this sort of diagonal rise and then starts animating for three seconds across so we go over to here and we get to about frame 95 96 and that's about 24 frames from the end of the clip so this is the final second and that's when we drop down to the bottom right and very quickly here's the node structure down here so I have a red ball and a green ball these are both ellipse shapes they plug into a mask where I've just ha I have a black or a red background and a green background these are just background nodes. Then I have a couple merge nodes. I have the timer here, which is a text plus. And down here I have the title example that I was showing at the beginning on the top left. So you'll be able to download this if you want to have a, a quick starting point if you wanted to play around with this kind of thing. Okay, so why do we need the keyframe stretcher? So what we've done is we've set up our animation here to be five seconds long. So if we go back into our edit page, we see our fusion composition here and we're at five seconds long. Okay, that's all well and good, but say we had a title sequence that we wanted to go a little bit longer. We wanted to take this, we wanted to stretch it out to 10 seconds. So I'm going to stretch it out to 10 seconds, I'm going to go back into Fusion, and I'm going to play this animation. Before I play this animation, what I'm going to do is I'm going to select the red ball. And what you'll see, if you look at the timeline here, is all the keyframes. These white little dashes here are the keyframes. And those are locked, those keyframes are locked to 23 and to 95. So those have not changed even though we extended the length of our animation. So if we were to go back to time zero, and we're going to play this animation, we see the time ticking away, we get up to five seconds, our animation stops, but we still have five seconds of the clip remaining. If we look back at our title example over here, the time it takes this title to swipe in, we probably don't want to change that, so let's keep that constant. But what we may want to stretch is the, is the length this title sequence sits. So we had it sitting for three seconds of a five second clip, so now we want to have it sitting for roughly 8 seconds of our 10 second clip and that will give the 1 second for the two animations at the end to wipe in and to wipe out. So how do we do that? As it turns out, doing what I just said is extremely simple. All we have to do is add a keyframe node. So I'm going to hold down shift, spacebar, that brings up our select tool. I'm going to type key to filter out to keyframe stretcher. I'm going to select that, click add. Oh, and I had some notes selected, so I added it in line. I'm just going to break this connection here, and I'm going to reconnect that up here. And I'm going to take this keyframe stretcher, and I'm going to hold Shift to put it in line here. So the keyframe stretcher is only going to affect this red ball, and it's not going to affect the green ball. Typically, you'd put a keyframe stretcher right before the media out node. It would seem kind of weird to want to stretch some frames within an animation and not others. But maybe there's a, there's a use for, use for that. In any case, I'm putting it a little back, a little further back in the chain, just to sort of prove the point that we can compare the red and the green balls to see how the keyframe stretcher affects the red ball only. And it does exactly as we expect. So I've set the animation back to time zero. I'm just going to let it play, and then we'll talk about it after.
Okay, perfect. So that did pretty much what we expected. So the red ball and the green ball are sort of tied as far as the race is concerned until we hit that middle section. Now what the keyframe key stretcher has done is it's slowed down the animation of the red ball only. The green ball is going to finish its animation about here, which is about five seconds in, if you look at the timer. Then we keep going, and our red ball's animation, the middle section, has been stretched until we get to about nine seconds. And then we start our descent downwards, which takes that final one second. So we've accomplished our goal of just stretching the middle and leaving the two ends intact in terms of time. Okay, so let's look at the keyframe stretcher and how does that actually work? So let's take a look at the properties within the keyframe stretcher. So they're pretty simple. There's not a whole lot of things there, but let's just go through them. So first we have our source start and our source end. Well, what that really means is, well, first of all, what's our source? So our source is the original five second clip. So it's anything before the keyframe stretcher. So anything in terms of frame numbers that you see here are in relation to your source. So thinking that way kind of helps out sort of understand how these things are, are, are to work. So we have our source start and our source end. We have zero as our start and 120 as our end. So that's our full length of our clip. Recall it's a five second, 24 frame per second clip. So 120 frames. So yeah, we want to include everything and we can play with this after a little bit. But what they do becomes pretty intuitive once we see this sort of next step here. So here's the really important part about the stretcher. So we have a stretch start and a stretch end. And you'll notice that this control up here is kind of split up into three sections as we had sort of talked about earlier. There's this section here up to 24 frames. There's this big chunk in the middle. And then there's this small chunk at the end from 96 frames up to 120. Now what this represents here, this gray bar in the middle represents the frames that are going to be stretched. So anything in this little black area here will not be stretched. And that's what we saw up to 24 frames it's still going to take 24 frames, which is one second. This last chunk here from 96 frames on from our source is still going to take that one second. It's, the, it's these frames in the middle that are going to be stretched out, and that's how much they're stretched out is dependent upon the length of the clip that we've changed to, in this case, 10 seconds. So this slider here is very handy when we have these kind of three distinct stages, but we could also take these sliders and bring them right back down to 0 and 120, and what that is going to do is just stretch out the entire animation. Everything is going to go slow, from the red ball at a, at a consistent speed. So that's one thing we can do with the stretcher, but I'm gonna put that back to default values. Now what we can also do is we can take a look at this stretch edges instead, which basically sort of flips intuitively what we're doing here. So it's gonna take this chunk here and stretch it out. It's gonna keep this middle chunk to be consistent and it's gonna stretch the end out as well. So in our case, where our middle section was originally three seconds, if we click stretch edges instead. So basically by clicking this, we're saying lock this middle section down to our original three seconds. So since our whole clip is 10 seconds and 10 minus three is seven, so half of seven is three and a half seconds. So this section here should be stretched out to three and a half seconds. This middle section should be three seconds and then another three and a half seconds. So let's take a look at that. So we take a look at the red ball right about uh, somewhere around this frame here. So three seconds and 10 frames in. We start that middle animation. I'm not exactly sure why the math isn't landing exactly on three seconds and 12 frames, but in any case, it's, it's right around the area. So now if I go up to six seconds and 10 frames, that's about when we should start our descent down. So let's try to do that. Let's go up here to six seconds and 10 frames. I'm gonna, now I'm gonna move the, I'm gonna use the arrow keys to do the, the animations manually. So we're, so take a look at this and like at this. Six second, 10 frames, and there we go. We start to head down. So it's kept that middle section intact. So I'm just gonna take that off right now. So those, are a couple of, so those are a couple of examples of how you would use this keyframe stretcher. If you take a look up here at the effects library, come down to edit templates and titles, you'll see you can add a whole bunch of these different titles. These are the default titles that, that ship with Fusion. So you can just grab one of these, you can drag it in here, double click on it to open it up, and you'll see most of them have a keyframe stretcher here attached. So it can certainly be handy to look through some examples in here of how the keyframe stretcher is used. So that's it. Thanks so much for watching, and we'll talk to you all soon. Bye now.